Be like, damn, slow down. And they see it cleaner just to her crown. She been knocked down, but she never stayed down. She been living life like it's her playground. And they be like, damn, slow down. They can get just, she be moving too fast. Sophia Mason was an eight-year-old California native who was reported missing by her grandmother March the 9th. Her grandmother called the police stating that the last time that she had saw her physically was in December during the holidays, but the last time that she had talked to her was about two weeks ago, and when she spoke to her, Sophia was not seeming herself. She was slurring her words and sounded very drowsy, so she had been worried ever since she had continuously called the mother after that phone conversation and was unable to speak to Sophia. Upon the investigation with the police, they did actually find out that it was true Sophia was missing. Furthering the investigation, Sophia's body was found in the bathroom of the home that she stayed in with her mother and her mother's boyfriend. Now when we say boyfriend, we're going to circle back to that, but we're going to use that term loosely. The disappearance and the earth shattering news of Sophia no longer being here unfortunately did not come as a surprise to her family as they stated that they have been begging and pleading with the police and child protective services for years in regards to their concern when it comes to Sophia with her mother. Sophia's mother Samantha is currently arrested and the boyfriend Dante is on the run and he is wanted for the same cause. We have no information regarding the cause of death for Sophia as that has not been released. Now getting into why this story is so heartbreaking and why the family was concerned and has always been concerned for Sophia's safety. Sophia lived with her grandmother and her aunt off and on her entire life. Her eight years of life, she was always off and on living with them because it was stated that Samantha was constantly leaving her for days, weeks, months, years on end, and then coming back abruptly and snatching her away. Samantha has a documented mental health issue. It is alleged that she is bipolar and suffers from other mental health problems. With that being said, she also lives a very chaotic lifestyle and it is alleged that she is a prostitute. The family did state when she would have Sophia, she would oftentimes give Sophia something to make her sleep while her mother did her prostitution jobs in and out of hotels where she also dragged Sophia. With that being said, Sophia would miss a lot of school. Sophia was not going to the doctors regularly and this was all documented. The family begged and pleaded last year of 2021 with the police not to give Sophia back to her mother when her mother came. The police stated why not. Now, the family is stating, what do you mean, why not? The care, the concern is not there. Later on that year of 2021, Sophia and her mother was in a car crash. When Samantha took Sophia to the doctor's office to be, of course, examined after the crash, the police and the doctors did see that there was bruises on her body that was already there prior to the crash. Once Samantha got wind that they were you know, noticing these bruises, she did abruptly leave the hospital with Sophia, um, not allowing any medical professional to help them. With that being said, CPS was contacted, but nothing was ever done. The family is stating that they sent numerous letters, begged and plead and called CPS numerous times to get Sophia help. Now on the screen, you guys see that a family member did actually make a status as well as a close friend. I'm going to read the close friend status first, just so you guys can get some details in regards to who Sophia was and exactly the type of situation she was in. She said, yes, M, tell them. The system failed Sophia. Her blood is on their hands. Damn right. Because I remember every single incident, every single time M filed a missing persons report, every CPS text thread or phone call, the CPS check where, so check where Sophia told them everything and was screaming for M in front of CPS workers. M is the aunt, by the way. Katrina and the police and each time they did nothing nothing at all even the time Sophia was in a crash with her mother 
and brought to the hospital with a broken neck, her mother left and took Sophia before she could get treated. M showed up to the hospital trying to tell them that right there should have raised enough concern. I'm so sorry, Sophia and M. I'm so heartbroken and I'm so damn angry. I know that this happens often. The system fails over and over again and it's so damn unfortunate. The boyfriend is still on the run. I pray he is found soon. So this is a close friend telling you guys like, look, we know for a fact that Sophia was in a very dangerous, scary living situation. And we know for a fact that we did our part to get her help. So why did the system continuously ignore this and overlook it? They don't know. So then a cousin of the family actually made a status on March 11th once the body was found. And they said, an eight-year-old child was found deceased this morning, or deceased this afternoon. A little black girl, a little eight-year-old black bundle of joy named Sophia Mason, who was also my youngest cousin. She loved dancing. She loved life. She loved love. And she trusted. She trusted people as kids do. She trusted a system to keep her safe, and the system failed her. Sophia was found today murdered in the home of her mother's boyfriend after being dragged around from city to city from North Cal to South Cal and back to North Cal again. We asked CPS, no, we begged CPS and the police to help her for years. We told them she was unsafe, that she was probably being abused. Over and over again, my family pleaded for authorities to intervene, but her case wasn't a priority. The police told us there was nothing they could do and they never sent out an Amber Alert. After all, she was just a little black girl from an unstable home. I saw her before we moved to New York and she begged me to buy her a squish mallow pillow to hold at night in the, in the women's shelter where her and her mother were staying temporarily. I asked her if she wanted clothes or toys. She said no, just a pillow to hold. One just like her cousin and my niece, Meadow, co collected. So off we went to Costco and she picked out the biggest Hello Kitty pillow her arms could hold. I wanted to move her across the country with us, but because the system is broken, we couldn't get her we couldn't get custody of her. No one could. But we are not the victim in this narrative. Sophia is. Today, Sophia paid the price for institutional racism and an overrun social services network. Heads turned the other way. Papers stuck at the bottom of a foul. News shows, news shows focused on missing women with blonde hair and blue eyes. She wasn't important enough for the system to save, but she was important to me and my family. I am so sorry, Sophia. I'm so sorry that we couldn't find you sooner. We love you so much and we will fight to make this right. Rest in love and dance with Jesus. And then also they have a GoFundMe for the family. It is going to be linked in my description box below. Now I'm going to go ahead and play two video clips from the news where they reported on this story so you can get more detail of what the family was facing and what the family has stated to the authorities time and time again for nothing to happen. The family of an eight-year-old girl missing from Hayward has confirmed that her body was found in a Merced home. Her mother is now in custody, accused of killing her, and the search continues for the mother's boyfriend. Our crime reporter, Henry Lee, is here now with the very latest on this very sad case. Henry. Jana, a cousin tells me this little girl had been neglected and abused and that relatives sounded the alarm with social workers. She says it's too late for Sophia, but that they hope other children in similar situations can be saved. We are collectively as a family devastated, um, sad, and I think numb and, and in a state of disbelief. The body of a child was found inside this home in Merced. Melissa Harris believes it's that of her eight-year-old cousin, Sophia Mason. There's a, a mixed bag of emotions, of course, because Samantha, her mother, is our family member also. Um, and we love her. We love Sophia, but also Sophia is an innocent victim in all of this. Sophia's mother, Samantha Johnson, has been arrested on suspicion of murder. Johnson's boyfriend, Dante Jackson, is wanted for the same crime. He's still on the run. Jackson is not the girl's father, but lives in the Merced home where a child's body was found. Merced police would not say how the child was killed or what role the couple allegedly played in the death. But about a week ago, Johnson called her mother and made a disturbing comment, according to Harris. And she said, next time I see you, Mom, it'll just be me and you like it used to be. The girl's aunt says Johnson was jealous of the attention her daughter got from the family. She was very happy, and she was very um, almost jovial and joyous about 
about the fact that she could be with her mother again without having Sophia present. The family believes Johnson, who is mentally ill, was involved in prostitution and moved from hotel to hotel. They say she would sometimes leave her daughter with her mother and disappear for weeks or months. About two and a half weeks ago, Sophia spoke with her grandmother on the phone. The normally bubbly girl did not sound like herself. She seemed very, very tired, almost drowsy, um, as if she were drugged. She wasn't able to string together her sentences appropriately, and that raised red flags for my aunt. The family says they repeatedly contacted Alameda County Social Services, but say they were told little could be done because the girl was with her mother. Hayward police tell me that Alameda County Social Services did look into at least one complaint back in 2021, but that the agency said it was unfounded. I reached out to social services, but a spokeswoman said she could not discuss anything because juvenile records are confidential. Under Last state week, law. tell us tonight she never should have died, that there were plenty of warning signs, but that no one would listen, no one would take action. Our investigative reporter Jackson Vanderbecken has the exclusive story from Sophia Mason's family who say they tried to protect her from her own mother. Sophia Mason was just eight years old when she died. Little girl, playful, um, nurturing, loved to dance, loved to sing. She loved everybody. She just... For much of her short life, Sophia, called Soso, lived here in Hayward with her grandmother. Police records show in January of last year, officers took Sophia from those relatives and turned her over to her mother, Samantha Johnson, who was claiming her sister, Emerald, was threatening and harassing her. Sophia's godmother, Tia Lennon, says she pleaded with police not to take her. So me and my mom went over there and we begged the officers, please don't take this baby. Please don't. And they were like, well, why? I should, if somebody's telling you not to take a kid, you probably don't want to be a little combative. You want to be concerning. Emerald Johnson says she told police her sister had shown little interest in raising her daughter. And she soon became so concerned for the girl's well-being that she filed this missing persons report, claiming Samantha had a history of prostitution, mental illness, and drug use, and often lived on the streets. A month later, authorities located Samantha and Sophia and set up a meeting with police and Child Protective Services. Family members say Sophia told them she had been abused. Sophia was crying, she was shaking. But child care officials said there wasn't anything they could do. Police confirmed they received another report of possible abuse several months later. That included pictures of suspicious bruising. But state agents again left Sophia with her mother. Family members say they wanted to talk to Sophia, but her mom kept saying she was sleeping before finally telling families she had given Sophia away, prompting them to file a missing persons report last week. Days later, authorities in Merced found Sophia's body in a house where they believe she was staying with her mother. Emerald Johnson says Child Protective Services could have done more to help Sophia and get to the truth before it was too late. I don't even think I have the words. I feel like her blood is on their hands.